opinion is uh, the best place for bounty. I know there's good things to be said about mid bounty hunter. The negative is you don't have as much AOE, so you can't push. But off lane bounty hunter, you're getting creep hits, you're buying tanky items, and then when you go get aggressive in melee range, invisible, even if you get spotted, your ability to survive is so much higher that you just basically need to stay alive and continue tracking people. And what's like they pointed out with uh, the Caudal dual lane, um, Shuriken toss cooldown right now is five seconds at all levels. So that means he can throw a Shuriken. He can be Chakra Magic, and he can immediately throw a second Shuriken. And really, this is only fair, because PA has lived for a decade just constantly throwing sharp objects at people, and Bounty's just going to give it right back for once. And it also is very similar to low cooldown. Yeah, I mean, Justice right there. Clearly, that was the reason why they picked this up. No, he's being encouraged. Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. Flea's tweets have been very... Uh, <clears throat> Thirsty, I Great guess bonk. is a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, bonk, go to horny jail. Uh, but anyways, interested to see how this is going to work out. I think last time we saw that bounty hunter pickup, they did not go for the tank build. Uh, it was not so good. It was a... Uh, that was a four, though, right? Was that wasn't a, a three? Position. Because they had the vengeful... And yeah. the three positions. It was, yeah, it wasn't like it was bench plus bounty. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was not a great tool. Uh, if he's hitting creeps, it's better. He's near the creep wave. That means he gets options to hit Janata on his opponent. Keep in mind that Janata is also toggleable right now. That means it doesn't just go off every 12 seconds. You can better control when to use it, whether for last hits or stealing gold from enemy carries. So there have been buffs to bounty three as well. Um, and he's also got a lot of base armor, 7.7, .7, which means any harassment that PA wants to provide against him is just not going to be very good. So he's actually going to trade well with PA. And like SVG pointed out, track the Invis heroes. He's against a Sand King. He's against a Nyx. Tracking both of these heroes is always going to be good because they're going to weave in and out of invisibility in teamfights. For all the bounty games possible, this one is pretty sick. I feel like we've been saying that a lot recently, not necessarily for Bounty Hunter, but we also saw the Zeus pick up the other night where we're like, look, Zeus is- Where Gunner didn't die the he, whole game? Uh-huh, he made exactly. it look good. Not sure everyone's rushing out to play Zeus after it, but you know, he did indeed show off his skill. Uh, my other question too, we have the Sand King mid, right? So mm -hmm. that's gonna be very important. We get those levels up, um, but does have the potential to fall a bit flat if they're not careful, right? Yeah. Uh, it's. Basically, you can push up the lanes against the melee hero. That part's always going to be pretty good. Um, and then you transition this into farming stacks, getting fast blink dagger, and then doing the same thing that Ryoya did last game, which is make space uh, by showing up to side lanes and getting stuff done. And he's got Caustic Finale against a uh, melee hero, so he has a good opportunity to get some damage, unless he ends up dying. He's here. going to die. He was extremely dead, actually. There was a yes. big margin. He could have attacked him at least one more time after that, so pretty big mistake. I tried to get like a, a creep tap into Burrow Strike, but Brile pretty easily outmaneuvered it, and that is going to start the game off in a rough place. Back into the lane now. You know, he's got full health, full mana. Maybe he can uh, turn this back around, and I'm sure we'll see some sort of rotation at some point as well. But yeah, The off lane for simply two base, Death Prophet plus Nyx Assassin. Enough disable, pretty good sustain for Death Prophet. Uh, Dubu has just been buying mangoes to spam out his opponents. He's focusing that damage on Nyx, who rushed boots, which is a pretty good way to go. Uh, Nyx does have pretty good regen, but if you rush boots, you don't have as much regen. So this is a good way to help offset the lane. And once again, uh, hopefully dumpster things in advantage of tomorrow. A lot of harassing on the bottom lane. Do force out the Icarus dive over on Empyrean. He's getting lower cooled on Janata as well, by the way. This shit's new tech. I forgot <laughs> about that the Janata cooldown as well. Mm -hmm. So he just does both. Get the melee hit, that's 60 bonus physical damage, and you throw out an 80 magic damage to Rikin toss. And now they're just out of HP. And all they had to do is hit level two. This is viable. <laughs> I'll say <laughs> With the Caudal. Which works out, because Caudal's kind of good anyways, right? Oh, he's very good. I mean, we've seen some very... Oh, Ooh, no, he's got the very far. He's got some, some stick charges. But yeah, that looked very, very close. How much regen did it bring? Okay, I'm going to turn back oh. around over onto Moon Meander. Save me, Bounty Hunter, the strongest carry. <laughs> this is not looking good for Ollie. And another three. Ooh, that's like, very this, low. It's model falling oh. the top lane while okay. this is all going on. Interesting. He had Waveform available. He did not use it. I guess they just stunned and killed him. So Tomato, uh, Tomato uh, still playing with his eyes closed is what's happening. He's still taking a nap, I think. That used to be fun whenever they'd uh, do the games with uh, versus Pepita over in South America. You'd have tomato and Pepita, so you'd have tomato and little potato. <laughs> and then it makes you think of the creep camp, right? You'd have that That's little true. stew camp of tomato and potato. They 
don't think I think they played on it together on a team for a brief period of time. It might have been on Infamous, but all right, I think this is a really good moment to actually pull up net worth before 10 minutes. Okay. Let's take a look at what Ollie's got net worth wise. Constantly being Janotted. His last hits are not far away from Bounty Hunters. He's only five behind. But look at the gold difference. There's already 500 gold difference because Saberlight's just beating him constantly with Janata. And that's such a higher rate. Normally, that's why this doesn't feel that good because it's like, okay, you're stealing gold, but like it takes time to build it up. You, it's like every 10 seconds, maybe you get a chance. But now it's just so constant. Coddle rolls up, gives him more throw nukes. More gold steel, more damage. Against the PA, this shit's working Ooh, real good. Ooh, that's so much damage. Is he going to be able to get the final hit? Nah, no, he doesn't want to go too deep diving underneath this tower. Top lane, though, looks like Dupu's gotten a lot of harass. Fleece is going to continuously plink away at him. But there's only so much that the Nyx assassin can do. He's got boots. It's Dubu. all about Roche. Seeing if he can get the... Uh, yeah, there's the Roche deny. That was cool how Dubu play. He plays in the, uh, the in-between zone. Of the uh, of vision, so it makes it a little bit harder for Flea to try to secure it. But Roche hits much harder than Nyx Assassin does, so that was unlikely that uh, Flea succeeds there. Mm -hmm. Did make a little bit of space though. Yeah, it's going to make it so that way Tomato can't get everything so easily as he did in the first game. I like what Moon Meander's doing, moving deep into the jungle and preparing for the moment that Ollie says, "My lane is too hard, time to jungle," and he's going to be ready with vision of this. In fact, he's just blasting mid. Rayo does dodge that one, luckily. Brow mad, I'm sure. But all those stolen last hits. But. I'm sure it's fine. Again, Saberlight continues to just keep trading back and forth here with Ollie. Just, just be a little bit careful. He's taking quite a few of those tower shots. Top lane. Tried to get the glimpse off. They've got the damage, though. Are they going to be able to finish off Dubu? No, again, the wave 4 4 over onto the Death Prophet. Bloody Sky. That Spirit Siphon. Still staying alive. A lot of close calls here in this top lane. PA 1800 net worth. Bounty Hunter 2500 net worth. Ooh. It's not the end of the world right now, but it's, you know, it's going to get a little bit worse as time goes on. My favorite is I always feel like you you do this where you're like this is totally viable. This is incredible and then later on like one bad thing happens goes okay, absolute garbage. Well, this is a moment where like something cool and new that I have not seen is is happening at least. It 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 just in almost always the matchup here against the PA it makes sense. Um, it's already good, and they have Coddle on top of it, which just makes it even better. Three points in Janana now, stealing 28 gold per hit that he hits the enemy here with. On the bright side, PA can last hit with Dagger. So that is an upside. But. Top lane, pressure being placed, and are they finally going to finish off Dubu? I think they should be able to, although not oh, if he dukes like that. Okay, there it is. There's the kill on Dubu. Flea taking some damage. The rotation coming up. The Spike Carapace buying a little bit more time. Go and pop that stick, but he is going to get run down here by Bryle. And this is looking like Bloody Sky is also going to fall. So a double kill for Bryle, and he's got to be very happy here with that rotation as yep. Moon Mander. Just soaking a little bit of XP. Very efficient, too. He put the remnant down, then he went to go gank. That way, as soon as the gank is over, he instantly jumps to a neutral camp, so he doesn't waste, like, any time at all. Just increases his survivability. Rio is now shifting the safe lane, knowing that his survivability is the only way to be safe, but Bounty just hit six, so if they do get vision of Rioya in one track, he's going to start experiencing that problem, too. Looks like the jump over onto the mid lane, Ollie. Not so safe here as the follow-up, though. The gank with three in the bottom lane will be able to go. collect on Saber Light. Maybe, you can maybe criticize him for not going hood first, but uh, opted for phase instead. And he's got all the regen items. Once he gets hood and phase, very difficult to kill the bounty. This is very unfortunate for Ollie, because he's having such a difficult time in the bottom lane when you consider all of the gold that's just getting sapped away from him and then to die over in the mid lane. I mean, he's fourth bottom net worth. That's not where you want your core to be. <laughs> oh, is this that kill for Tomato, really? I see. Stunned from, uh... Yeah, there we yeah. go. Stunned from the trees. It was just enough damage. He feels good about that one. What a nice smile. You should tweet more of that. <laughs> not as regular tweets. <laughs> Some, uh, social media tips coming from Purge Gamers here. <laughs> All right, what are we looking at? We have level six online for the Death Prophet, so could potentially see, and you are having a pretty big rotation coming out from two base for this top lane. So looking to put pressure on this tower, possibly take it out. And there's the exorcism. It's popped. Flea's just going to harass a little bit against Motto. It looks like Bloody Sky just wants to focus on taking down this uh, 
this tower and opening up the dire jungle. Exorcism's just mega busted right now. And, like, this is like one creep wave and an ulti, and the tower easily dies. And they glyphed it. Like, it's not even close. That was half of exorcism. Mm -hmm. and teleporting over to the mid lane. Several of the TSM are here. Brile. He's got an invis rune. He's got sights over onto Imperium. They also have sights over onto Ollie. Oh no, another death on Ollie as Bloody Sky trying to hunt. And again, Connell, he's so fast. So the exorcism will end. Bloody Sky will just have to be satisfied with the bounty rune. And here comes the hood completion and the broom handle. That'll put Saberlight very survivable here. We have 18 armor and magic resistance. He's going to chase here. This is definitely pressurable. They did have a teleport, though, down here. Has to be careful he doesn't dive too, too hard, because Flea is in position. But he's pretty speedy with those phase boots. He's just going to walk away throughout the uh, track, and off he goes. Just but a couple slaps like that is totally fine. <laughs> we are having a good time over here. Oh, he does have blink. That's fine. Does have the blink, does have the burrow strike, and does... Oh, no! Oh, the haste rune on Moogiander! This uh, kid, man. That is so close to getting the kill. Really feels bad for Ryoya there. Blink reveal, uses epicenter, doesn't get the solo kill. Tough one. He did also have fairy trinkets, so he had quite a bit of damage here, but not enough. I feel like this is classic for Moon Meander. We saw this in one of their other games previously, where he escaped with just almost no hit points. I think it was on Weaver, too. Yeah, he's just a very good player. He's yeah. He's been playing very consistently for a long time. Um, oh, we did see a Bounty Hunter die, apparently. Got ganked by Bloody Sky and probably Flea, yeah. It was yeah, they were bottom. Gank. They were bottom together. All right, they land a Static Storm over onto Tomato. But, or rather, they landed it over on Rioya. Just a little defense there. Um, there is almost a Spirit Vessel, though. Who's building that? Oh, oh, the Ollie cannot afford to die here. There's not much mana, though, left over here on Bryle. Does have the Slight, though? All right, turn back around over onto Rioya. They don't quite... Oh, they have dust. Oh, here's the bounty. Okay, I was going to say... There's Saberlight. He's looking to collect. Oh, nice Burrow Strike, though. Buys him enough time with that blink. Looks like he's going to survive, but the Glimpse back over onto Pyramid. Oh, no he is track? not going to be Come as on. lucky. They do have the track over onto Rioya, but... Why not let the man track? Come on. That was a Glimpse back Phoenix. Let the... I guess he had an egg, but still. That was like 130 gold. 40 for themselves as well. They could have just let it die. Mm. Very frustrating. All right. Literally, Saber uh -oh. Light. Uh oh. Saber Light's doing my build. Okay, he's evaded. This is this is still looking like a very dead Ollie. Yeah, Tomato just casually will taking a stroll through the woods, gets a couple taps off. There's so <laughs> it's a disruptor player you love when that happens. Absolute pain. Oh, the exorcism getting popped over here by Bloody Sky, but Saber Light, he's got a decent amount of damage in there. It is Moon Meander, the follow-up the Illuminate Brow will get the kill. Nice Burrow Strike, rather, and they'll follow up with an egg. Saber Light's pretty fast, is gonna have to run away, though. He's out. Yeah, it was a good impale that came out, too, from the uh It was, it was really, really solid. Picks off Moon Meander, Saber Light's back in, more track coming. They're going back in after Imperium, this time they do have the track. They don't quite have the damage. The epicenter, oh. though, over onto the back lines. They'll take that to the end tomato. The track over on to flee. Spike Carap is buying him a little bit of time, but cannot escape Ryle. And Rioya now is hoping that they won't run into him. Do they have any more detection? It's not looking like they do. So he's just going to hide out the sandstorm. Moon Meander has a sentry, though. Going to start with the Illuminate. Burrow Strike forward. Again, they do have the track on him, so. That's a triple kill and a tower going the way of TSM. All right, they clean up. It looked a little bit iffy with the nice Thanking ultimate, uh, picking up both the Morphling plus one, but hey, they're getting track kills and uh, Saberlight is tied for net worth with the most farm tier on simply two based. Uh, PA is still fourth on the bottom. But genuinely, this is my favorite bounty build. This is the same one I do. Phase, wand, you buy a hood or a vanguard, depending on what's in the game, but usually a hood. And then you buy eggs. Eggs increases your raw HP by a huge amount. It combos nicely with the hood. When you buy shard later, your HP's better. It just makes sense. Ollie over here is getting jumped on. There's not a lot of mana left over here onto Bryles. Gonna try to get a couple of these slides off. Does have the remnant. Empyrean is gonna fall. It's a track kill. A couple tracks being tossed out as Bryle eventually does fall. But they'll chase now. Oh, they get the kill over onto Ollie yet again, but. Now Bloody Sky, Blinding Light, throws out the Crypt Swarm. Tomato's just going to wait for him forward and finish off as... Uh, that's, uh, thought they were going for a bit of a dive here. Still chasing after Rioya, does have the blink.
But they did manage to take down Brile. That's a big deal. That was a decent amount of gold, too. Did you see how much? That is a massive 861 plus 360. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. Do the math, Purge. What, I mean, but the 360 is split with an amount of heroes that I can't see because the text is in the way. So how am I supposed to do the math? Fine. Nice impale sunray though, coming in hot. It's gonna be able to keep Rioya alive, put a little damage out over onto Saber Light, but Winding Light plus the track. Ollie jumping forward, hoping to get himself a kill. He's been having a difficult game, Blur. And again, that glimpse back over onto Rioya is gonna fall, and now the exorcism coming out from Bloody Sky. Yeah, that's uh, an exorcism that isn't doing a whole heck of a lot as Saber Light, think about going back in. Do have the track down. I'll be able to take down that ward just actually timing out right at that moment. They want the kill real bad. The spirit vessel's up. It's a perfect item against Morphling. Very good against uh, Ember at times, too. They're still hunting like this. They go, they pop the drums. Me still tracks. They see. Oh, yeah. They see the Phoenix and they want Bloody Sky as well. And they should be able to find it. No problem. And his eggs is almost done. 800 gold away. Good job. And Bounty's eggs finished. And uh, keep in mind, like, this is already good by itself, because every time you throw a Shuriken, you're getting Janata procs on everybody that's tracked, and he's got a Coddle. So he's going to be able to toss out Shurikens constantly to get net worth. Hey, he just, yeah, he made just took 36 a gold again. Just took so much of Flea's life in that one hit. Hey, okay. Ollie's just not allowed to play this game. Not at all. They'll turn and get themselves another kill on Flea. The teleports are coming out, but... He stole another 100 gold there with the three hits. Even when he hit him through Spike Care Pace, he still stole yeah. the 36 gold, even though he took the damage himself. Completely worth it. But yeah, Brawl had such a good early game that he used his high magic damage to just punish Ollie constantly. Ollie's still fourth net worth in the game. Doesn't have boots. He's like, I just need to get Battle Fury to catch up, but... Yep, there's what, a static storm. What we basically saw this game and this, uh, the previous game and this game is just like a fundamental outplay uh, from the TSM side. Yeah. Obviously, there's strategy involved as well, but this just looks like a, a complete outmatch, without a doubt. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This bounty hunter is definitely uh, snowballing out of control, and as is Brile. Here comes his eggs. Yep. Just a simple 13k gold advantage at 16 minutes. Are they gonna think? No? Considering it, there's quite a few bodies over here. Oh, they'll turn for the maybe a little bit easier of a kill on Dubu, but they're still not able to do it. Yeah, they have to play around Ollie because he keeps getting gone on. After yeah, the track. Oh, he. there are so many heroes here, Ollie. Look at that damage. All right, it does manage to blink away. All the solar blind on top of it. They'll go for the egg. They've already got the epicenter of the silence. And Big they up. should be able to finally take down Tomato. Egg will pop. That's the team, though, joining back in. Brio was not with them at the start of this fight. Another couple tracks getting put down. He's begging for a chakra magic, dude. <laughs> look at all this gold he's about to get. Mm, they get the glimpse. There's the Icarus die. They need just a little bit more. Yeah, look at that chakra magic. Brow says, no, no, no. This one belongs to me. That's so easy. Level two there. He's getting 225 gold per kill now. He just finished eggs. He's at 870 gold towards his shard. Like, absolutely dumpster in here. Because then it, now he gets two Janata hits. And when you snowball like this so hard, your opponents don't have that much armor. You're getting crits on this Janata damage. It's just way too much overwhelming physical damage. And all you need to do is make sure that you're still tanky. You're up in the front. You're tracking them constantly. You're throwing shurikens, slapping them with Janata. It becomes a snowball thing. Well, they're going to try to make the play over onto this Keeper of the Light. And they should have enough damage this time around. So Moon Meander will finally fall. No chakra magic for anyone for That's a good. couple seconds. And all I got the kill. It's got two whole items. Ooh. Very rich. A stick and an axe. That's all you need. <laughs> that is a uh, full-on Valheim survival mode right there. That way, that way, if your uh, your axe falls out of your hands, you still have a weapon. It's very important. Hey, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. I guess you also have your fists, right? Those do not work for blocking. It's not Radiant not safe. Not safe, <laughs> for sure. So they're pretty much staying uh, S5 for simply two base. They basically have to do this. They've been doing a great job killing Morphling. That's the one thing that keeps going well for them. Tomato, despite having a Lincoln Sphere, he's like, hey guys, I want to join in the fun. And then he just gets killed because they put everything on him. Do you get the Philosopher's Stone, so that'll be helpful for some of the supports over on the side of Simply 2 base. But, oh, Rioi, he's rooted into place. The Sunray trying to keep him alive. Not going to be enough. The BKB popped over onto Brile. He's just going to chase after Bloody Sky, and they'll find themselves a kill on. They'll cancel out that teleport. <laughs> just a simple. He only got two track kills that game, or that, that engagement, guys. Don't worry, don't worry. I like Flea's little dance, because he knew he was dead at that point. He might as well, you know. Yes, he was certainly not going to 
not going to go far there. Uh, is that the shard coming? Yes, he's got shard now and another 800 gold on Bounty Hunter. Um, I'm, I'm actually just surprised Bryles able to even keep up with the bounty as many track kills as he's getting. But he's he's getting 15 kills. He's the one that's getting a lot of kills here. But he's also getting track hold too. It's a team effort. It really is. Kaya completed. I, I just don't know where Ollie goes right now to be able to get anything done. Like, the second he shows up, everybody seems to, like, make a beeline for him. And they can't protect him. They've got, like, all of these bodies surrounding this PA, but they just have so much damage. He's just not buying boots. He just doesn't does not want the boots. Um, normally, when you're in this bad of a situation as a PA, what you want to do is you want to use, utilize blur to be invisible, and you go hit creep somewhere. Yeah. Um, ideally, uh, somewhere very far away. Or if you can get to the enemy side of the map, they're not spending time in their tri camp. It's bad for them uh -oh. to farm there, so that's that would be ideal. Yeah, they want bloody sky. They've got the track already down. The spirit siphon is nice, but not going to cut it. That's Imperian. Probably gonna have to Icarus dive away. Yeah, look at that. Uh, He's trying to buy some space, I assume, but Bryle, they have the chase. They're fast enough. They'll prove his place, and that's a lot of damage. Yeah, when somebody's tracked, uh, every time you attack them, you get a 70% bonus damage. So uh, that plus Janata is a lot, and that is why everyone is just dying. He doesn't even have, like, a real damage item, you, but that's the thing. You don't need it. You actually want tank on this hero. Just by staying alive, you're more than capable of contributing to team fights because you just get a huge damage boost every three attacks. You get the crit. Shrek and Toss is good, and Ags just jumps up into a huge another level. I can't wait to see the post-game screen, to be honest. See how much gold he's stealing? Stolen? Yeah. All right, here comes another gank bottom. I don't even think, honestly, that Dubu needs to be here. He was there just in case he went invisible, that's all. But yeah, when you're getting two-shot like that, you're, you're in mega danger, ter mega danger territory. It's, uh, this game is... Extremely one-sided is how I'll say it. It's 20k net worth lead over to the side of TSM. Ollie is going to be able to teleport it out. That was probably very scary for him, but over on the back lines, they do end up losing Dubu. They use the epicenter. Small upper uh, good thing for them is that uh, any kill you do get gives you a lot of gold for comeback mechanics. They'll take whatever they can get for sure. Let's get their own little Sand King here with a Burrow Strike. Clean up on Bloody Sky. Saberlight just tossing out these tracks left and right. Could be the Yules coming to play the Solar Blind slow down, and yeah, they just they do so much damage here. And Bryle gonna go for a bit of a dive over onto Flea. He's got the BKB, so Spike Care is not gonna matter. They're just walking all over the space. Alright, Moxie, how does simply two base get back into this game? <laughs> they need to rewind, I think, at this point. Need to rewind to make sure that Saber Light doesn't uh doesn't snowball the way that he's doing and also I, I don't know I'm not sure the the Sand King seemed like it again I'm not you know I'm not a pro player by any means not even a high MMR player by any means but it just felt like underwhelming yeah uh they I don't know they're just they're just too far behind basically well, they're hunting Ollie like. again I don't know if there's a good solution against the bounty uh, the bounty was just a, a really perfect gotcha pick, so to speak. It did, it did a lot of damage. I think maybe the only solution is if you have like a five position hero that can heal like a warlock or something to offset the harass. That would go a ways because then the PA could continue potentially last hitting. Isn't warlock considered one of like, like absolutely it's terrible It's not good, too? but yeah. But if, if somebody has like an amazing amount of spam, one way that you can offset that is either like a witch doctor heal okay. or a warlock heal. But the PA matchup against the bounty, it's clearly not good. Yeah. High armor on bounty, lots of easy harass. He's melee hero. They just it was it was a really good pick. Yeah. And like, the way they played it with the with the coddle is really cool. I feel like we're seeing so many cool like coddle kind of uh, just combinations. We are. That is a lot of little coins being tossed out there. Couple shuriken bounces. BKB getting popped on. Bryce going for a dive. Wants to just blow up this death prophet. It'll be Moon Meander who gets it, and Saberlight cleaning up on Rioya. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how they come back here at this point. This they is looking can't. very rough. Nice. Impale coming out again from Flea, but it just slows them down. This position of the game is just broken for Bounty Hunter, because your ability to poke is so easy. Even has his BKB just got delivered. Not going to be able to finish up on Imperium, but he'll turn his attention over onto Bloody Sky. And uh, they'll lose Imperium. Bryle just sliding around back and forth. They're going to just go and... The game is over. Feels like they're playing with their food now at this point, honestly. I mean, there's there's no reason to back. You, you're survivable on Bounty. 
you can track them from very far range, and you can throw shuriken tosses from pretty far range. Yeah. And every time you do, they take a huge amount of damage that gets amplified by your crit damage. All right, and there's... they lose their gold. There's the GG. And for every kill that happens, your team gets more and more and more ahead. It's a, it is a snowball hero. But in normal circumstances, you do not get this far ahead on Bounty. 